Can you hear me okay? Okay. A little forward. Right. I hope you're not a tough audience, you know, because I've never spoken to Israelis all at once before. And forgive me for not having Hebrew. Okay. Why am I here? I am in Israel for the fathers, really, and mothers and children. I've been to the United Nations three times at the request of Israelis, okay, who want to speak out and tell the world that their human rights have been abused. I know this is kind of against what you've just been told, but if I shoot you, okay, it's that quick. But if you shoot you, what did it take for you to shoot you? Now, Israel has one in 72 men who are going through divorce who kill themselves. Okay, one in 72, one of the highest in the world, are killing themselves because of the divorce laws in Israel. Also, men, and I'll, I'm, I'm going to come to women because I love women too. Well, let's just start with the men. A bit raised. Okay, so men are dying. That's the first thing in quite high quantities. The second thing as well, do you want me to move and dance and dance? <laughs> How near would you like me to get to you? I can just kind of walk. I'll just stay and I'll just walk around. I've never done a ground floor. Ah, you need me out of the roof. Got it, got it. Okay, so we have one in 72 divorcing men taking their lives every single year. That's too many. How many do you want? One's too many, no? Uh, you have men who can't see their children like that. Just because, just because. I'm voting. Okay, so, so when a man suddenly is not a father on the first day of his separation, he goes to a Merkaz Kesha. It is the number one in the world in Israel, Merkaz Kesha. Twelve times higher than any other country in the world. Because men are so dangerous. Okay, you're so dangerous. You are the most dangerous people in the world. According to women's organizations, 200,000 women in Israel every year are beaten. That means 200,000 men are beating them. Now, I've been here 30 years, and I haven't found you all. I think most men are not battering women. Okay? You don't beat them. But it's easy for a woman to say, I'm beaten, I'm scared, he's violent. And the judge will believe the woman. I've been in court all afternoon today with a man whose child has gone like that. The woman is in a battered shelter. She has no violence. She has admitted three times to the judge He's not violent, not to me, not to the child, but she needs a bit of money and she needs a free house and she needs a free lawyer and the law allows that. So when I count the thousands of men that have died, including my own husband who nearly did die in this country and is a vegetable, then it's too many. How many is the numbers? The numbers of men that we know that are dying is at the rate of two to three hundred a year. It's raising to out of the 500 we know that 200 children again unofficially are taking their lives every year because they're not with their parents okay now Israel's a family it's a family country the Jews it's about family so what's going on that it's such a secret not to tell anyone that it's better to have a man kill himself than be scared an Arab will kill him I don't get the logic. Sorry, who was talking about logic? I don't get it. Why would you allow your own people to die to keep secrets? So I don't keep the secrets. I go outside and I tell the United Nations every single time. Every single time. I have 300 videos this year of men and women and children who are begging for international help. Begging. This is a country that kept quiet. Now there's queues of people begging to say, tell it in English, tell it in English. I can't live like this. And you can't live like this because it's not real. It's not real, okay? Now last year, this year, Yossi Silman of the Revacha, the chief executive of your Revacha, our Revacha, said on TV, 
We have to steal 10,000 children a year to make the numbers. But I only made 8,000, so I have no job. Heim Katz said on TV, children are a business. Yes, we make 17,000 shekel per month for every child we steal from you and put into a private American institution. And Heim Katz said, maybe we'll take it to 12,000 shekel, not kids. Now, why do 10,000 children not live at home? What's wrong with the parents? I'm in houses where one child is taken, one child is left. Two boys are taken, two girls are left. It's not all the kids, it's just one or two to keep people behaving, to keep them behaving. And those in your community in Israel who I know, who are my friends, who speak out, who speak out, and I'll name Laurie Shemtov, who's currently been in jail for saving a man by writing about him. She writes about mothers. She supports a website called Mothers Cry. Her children were taken from her nine years ago. She did not cooperate with social services. She went to the Supreme Court. They fined her 20,000 shekel for her chutzpah, and she has no children. She fights for the mothers. She's in jail. She will go to jail again. Rafi Rotem, who fights against the judges, the corruption in Israel, that allow this to happen, last week was made into a criminal. A criminal. And what did the judge say? The truth is not a defense. That's, your, that's the judges. The truth is not a defense. Kola It's a joke. It's a joke. Now, why is everyone sitting quiet? and sitting quiet and talking about right wing and left wing and this and that and the other, when your families are dying in here, your children are dying, your fathers are dying, your mothers are dying, and they haven't got anywhere to go. They've got no one to tell. So guess what, the lucky girl here, they tell me, and I took it on myself to go and tell everybody else. Now that doesn't make me a very popular person sometimes because Palestinians read it, and anti-Semitic people read it. Oh my God, the whole world, all these eight billion people read it. And they help, they help. I've had no help from Jews in America, no help from Jews in England, no help from Jews in Europe, none. They try to close me, they try to shut me up, and they tell me, don't talk. Now my answer is, if people are dying, do you really want to keep it a secret so that you have a good image? Is the image so important that you'll let people die here? Really? There are more dead fathers than soldiers from the last two wars. And yet one soldier dies and there's a funeral, and 300 men died in the last nine, ten months, and you don't hear a word. How many kids with no dad? A friend of mine is destitute. <laughs> no house, no car. No, nothing. Nothing. Now, I have one big beef with Israel, you know, and this is a beef that comes personally. There is something you have in Israel that's unique in the whole world, and that is your Tzav Yikuv, Yikuv Yitzia. You know, no exit. Only you. Only Israel do this. Only Israel. And they do it on future guarantee. We talk. We talk. They make Thank you pay you. ahead. Now, my husband, who I used to have a husband once, who was a great guy, she, his ex, who can just say what she wanted, the court ordered 36 years' worth of child support for an eight-year-old. 600,000 shekels cash down. Who can afford it? So he decided he didn't really like living here or living, and he tried to end his life, and that's what set me on this path. I wrote the book, which you have in Hebrew, somebody translated for me here, I wrote it in English and it did become a bestseller, but there, are, uh, there is an assessment that 1.2 million Israelis are trapped in Israel from the Otsala Pole. 1.2 million. It's also estimated that maybe three to 400 foreign nationals, not Israelis, foreign nationals are walking the streets, the beaches and starving in this country because they came and got tricked and trapped and they can't get out. And I've met lots of them. And we in our civil society, who there is the founder, 
do everything we can to help foreign nationals leave, to fight against the system, because why should a Spanish restaurant owner come here and spend 400 days on a beach? Why should an American young Navy SEAL spend two hours living in McDonald's in Jerusalem? Why should a Canadian pregnant woman be made to have an assessment because she chose to not be here? Why are people who are making Aliyah that I meet, Orthodox Jews, not allowed to make Aliyah? Because they're not quite Jewish enough, says Ms. Radapanim. And starving and begging. And I wrote a story about a South African only two, two weeks ago who is stealing and begging for food because he's trapped here for five years because of the Otsala pole. And he wants to pay, and he can't because he doesn't speak Hebrew and no one's helping him and he will die in Israel. He will die in here. Now, I'm sorry, not very good news tonight, is it? But I see this every day. My emails are full, my phones are full. I am almost in trauma myself from the constant, constant, constant videos and phone calls from mums, children being raped in institutions who I know those children, you know, children locked in emergency centers for years, not months, who are escaping, who've been beaten, please, you've got to do something. I can't do this on my own. You know, I lost my home, my pension, my work, my job. I'm couch surfing in Israel with no money whatsoever. I gave every shekel I had to come and help. And I can't do it on my own anymore. I need some support, you know, because they're your people. It's, our, it's everybody's people. Time's up. Thank Time you. I'm over. I just want to say... Sorry about that. A little impassioned there, wasn't I? <laughs> I feel strongly about it. Use us. We can help. We'll use our network. Okay. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll learn the subject. I didn't get started, really. And obviously, we've got uh, people here. And